Hey everybody, Doc Ron Bio again here uh, to give you some help with some problems that you might come across in gene expression. Uh, mutations are an important concept in life science and when you're doing gene expression, chances are your teachers are going to give you examples um, of mutations to find and uh, how to uh, f play them out in a gene expression setting. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about substitution mutations here uh, in this screencast. So what is a mutation? Well, uh, the thing is, is that mutations have to occur to a DNA molecule. So you have to do something to at least one of the DNA nucleotides to cause a mutation, and then there will be consequences in your RNA and potentially consequences in your amino acids. So a lot of the times when you work on problems, uh, mutation problems, it's going to be easiest to work in the RNA molecule and to play around with RNA codons, but keep in mind DNA is the molecule that gets mutated um, and has long-term consequences. Okay, so uh, there are three general categories of mutation, substitutions, uh, insertions, and deletions. So we'll talk about substitutions today, and you, there will be another screencast for insertions and deletions down the road. So let's get right into it. So. Let's practice making some substitution mutations in the DNA above. Okay, so uh, this is a really simple exercise, but keep in mind that um, you know you can get mutations at any position of a DNA molecule. So I've sort of broken these out into three-letter clumps to help you visualize. But let's say we mutated this first letter here in this uh, DNA code. And let's say we changed it over to G. Okay, so the mutated DNA would then be GCC. So we'd substitute this C for this G down here, and that would be a mutated DNA. Similarly, you can change uh, any letter, so we could change this to a T, and that would be GTT. Similarly, we can change any letter in here, and to get a mutation, let's change that G to an A. So this would be TAG. And here we can change this last letter, change this to T-A-C. Okay, so all of these are, are mutated DNA. Now there's going to be a consequence downstream. So obviously the RNA is going to uh, change. And then potentially you have changes to the amino, amino acid uh, that that RNA is translated into. Okay, so we'll follow that along here as we uh, get into increasingly more difficult problems. Okay, so substitutions part two. So I've given you a wild type or normal code here in DNA. So our code here is ACC. And if we do gene expression and we transcribe this into RNA, it would be UGG. If we take that UGG and translate it into amino acids, you'd have to have a genetic code table here to do this, but UGG codon codes for tryptophan. Okay, now let's mutate this uh, DNA uh, and see what happens. Let's change, I don't know, let's change this C right here. Let's make our mutant DNA A, C, uh, let's see. No, you know what, let's go with the A. Let's change this to, let's change this to, AAC. So now we're going to have AAC, this being the mutant uh, nucleotide. We should have a C right here, but instead we're going to have this A. Let's see what the consequence is as we express this gene, or this piece of DNA at least. Okay, so again, that A would, would code for a U. Uh, this A would now give us a U, and again, this C would give us a G in RNA codon speak. What does UG, UUG give you? Well, you take out your genetic code table. UUG codes for leucine. Okay, so you're seeing now that if we mutate even a single letter in our DNA code, there are downstream consequences. In this case, we went from having a tryptophan to a leucine. Okay, let's see what else we can do here. 
Uh, I want to break down substitution mutations a little further and describe some of the consequences of those substitutions. So a substitution mutation, all of which we've described so far as point mutations, point mutations, um, you know, in, a, in the most simplified cases, one, uh, one nucleotide changes or mutates. Okay, so we're looking at substitution point mutations here, changing one single letter and having consequences downstream. Now, uh, sometimes you'll get super lucky and nothing will happen. So if your mutation in your DNA uh, leads to the translation and addition of the same amino acid, you have what's called a silent mutation. Obviously, a best case scenario uh, your DNA is in fact mutated or changed, but you still code for the same amino acid, so you're still going to put the same amino acid at that position in the protein, best case scenario for sure. Oftentimes, when you perform a substitution mutation or when your D DNA gets a, a single letter changed, uh, you'll arrive at what is called a missense mutation. So this is when you're supposed to get one amino acid, but instead you arrive at another amino acid. So the example that we just performed in which we went from uh, tryptophan to leucine, this would be an example of a missense mutation because you're swapping out changing that amino acid. Um, the consequences for a missense mutation can range from fairly benign, so a, a change that doesn't really affect your protein too much, to a change that totally changes the structure and function of your protein. And we'll uh, get to some examples of that a little later. The worst case scenario, in my opinion, I guess, um, you know, is when you have a nonsense mutation. So uh, a nonsense mutation is um, an instance in which, in this case, a substitution leads to the coding for a premature stop codon. So you're going along, you're translating your protein. Let's say your protein is 300 amino acids long. If you have a substitution mutation smack dab in the middle of that gene, when it is transcribed into RNA, that RNA codon will code for a stop, and essentially translation stops halfway down uh, the construction of that protein. So obviously that's a bad thing your protein is most likely not going to function if there's only half of it present. So changing to a stop is, is potentially most likely devastating for a protein. So let's see these different consequences of substitution mutations in action. Okay, so we're gonna start off here with a DNA code of ATG. And obviously these are simplified versions. DNA is uh, long continuous strands of nucleotides. So um, it read a lot more heavy, but basically right now we're just practicing this. So in the wild type or uh, most abundant portion of this particular gene, you see the code ATG. Now when you transcribe ATG, you get UAC. What does UAC code for amino acid wise? Take out your genetic code table and check. UAC codes for tyrosine. Okay, so we're going to symbolize that by a Y. Um, let's make a mutation to ATG that will result in a silent mutation. Okay, so I'm going to change the third nucleotide in that code to an A. Okay, so I'm swapping out the G for this A. Downstream in transcription, what that means is you still get the U, you still get the A, but now you're going to get another U. What does UAU code for on the genetic code table? UAU still codes for tyrosine. Okay, so the amino acid didn't change, so you got lucky in this instance, and this is a silent mutation. Let's take a look at mutation number two. Here we're going to swap this uh, middle DNA nucleotide, which should be a T. Uh, we're going to swap it for a G. Okay, so I have A, G, G. What does AGG, with that middle G nucleotide being uh, the mutation, what does that code for? Uh, what does that put out for RNA? What kind of transcript do we get? Well, it's UCC. 
Now take out your genetic code table again and see what UCC codes for. UCC codes for serine. Okay, so now we've had a missense mutation because we should be getting Y, but instead we're going to get an S. Okay, we'll discuss what that means for the structure function of the protein in a minute. Okay, now we're going to look at mutation 3. Mutation 3 is going to swap out that last DNA nucleotide. It should be a G again, but we're going to put a C. So our mutation is here in C. What RNA transcript do you get? UAG. What does UAG code for? UAG codes for a stop. So this is a nonsense mutation that leads to a premature stop. So at this particular codon, the protein would stop being made. And that's almost always devastating for a protein, unless you're on one of the last amino acids, but chances are that's not happening. Let's take a closer look at uh, this example of a missense mutation. So in our previous example, we uh, converted this, this tyrosine amino acid here to a serine amino acid here. Now missense mutations can uh, be not devastating. It is a change in amino acid, but they can be not as devastating, ranging all the way up to pretty devastating. And here's why. So in this case, we have tyrosine, which is a polar amino acid. So I'm going to note that right here. This is polar, meaning it's hydrophilic. It does not mind interacting with water. And uh, we've converted it to serine, which is also polar. So in instances in which the amino acids behave the same, so these are both polar amino acids, and if you look at this, the structure of these two amino acids, the only thing that's really different is this ring structure right here. Um, pretty much these two amino acids are about the same shape. Um, so this would be not terrible. Uh, if you have to ask for a uh, missense mutation, uh, one that stays within category, meaning polar and polar, or nonpolar, nonpolar. That's the best case scenario, and if the structures are similar, that's not too bad. Um, let's take a look at this one, though. Uh, this is a tyrosine uh, being switched over to a proline. So here we have proline, okay? We said here that this was polar. Um, the downside to this is that um, is that the proline in this case is nonpolar. So you're getting a switch from a polar to a nonpolar amino acid, which is uh, usually not a good thing, especially if it's in an important part of the protein. Um, and then similarly, if you look at that, uh, proline can be a complicated. Um, amino acid with this structure here um, having an impact on how it behaves and where, where it goes. So um, this would be an instance of a missense mutation uh, that is bad. So um, this one would be potentially devastating to the structure of a protein. Okay, so in biology and life sciences in general, structure function is an absolutely essential concept to master. Um, so when it comes to protein shape, its shape dictates what it's able to do. So if you go and have, if there's a mutation in your DNA which causes a different amino acid to be put into your protein, you're most likely gonna alter that structure, okay? Um, we do not want to alter our structure because if we um, alter our structure, a lot of times we lose our function, okay? So your teacher might ask you some questions about switching different types of amino acid and what the consequences on the protein. Well, rest assured that if it switches from a nonpolar to a polar and vice versa, and if the structures are different, that's going to impact the structure uh, of the amino uh, the protein as a whole and most likely its function. Okay, so I hope this uh, brief little tutorial helps. Uh, let me know what you think.